When we first met Emma Clayton, she was 14 years old and had been battling type 1 diabetes half her life. I have to give myself insulin for every single piece of food I put in my mouth. Three years later, she's watching the news that she says could bring a cure. There were times where I thought that I would have to live with this for my whole life, but today, I feel for one of the first times in my life that that just may change. It's a bittersweet moment for Emma's parents who feel eight years have been wasted. Science in this country is back and we are very hopeful. Also hopeful, California researcher Hans Kierstead. It's going to result in a floodgate of more researchers, more students entering the field and greater industry investment. He's experimented on paralyzed rats, injecting them with embryonic stem cells to generate new nerve cells. The rats walked again. Biotech company Geron has been given FDA approval to study Kirstead's treatment in the first ever human trials to start this summer. Other scientists didn't even try to work within the old federal restrictions, taking their work overseas. This research has been going on in uh, the United Kingdom, in Singapore, in Japan, China, and of course that other foreign country, California. Californians voted to spend $3 billion in taxpayer money to fund stem cell research here. And around the country, it was state and private funds that helped to develop hundreds of new embryonic stem cell lines. Federal officials still have to work out the guidelines for the new research, and they warn any breakthroughs are still years away. Sandra Hughes, CBS News, Los Angeles. CNN medical correspondent Dr. Sanjay Gupta is also a CBS News contributor. And Sanjay, as we heard Chip say, Congress passed legislation in 1996 that prohibits the creation of embryos simply for the purpose of right. using their stem cells. If the ban against using tax dollars for this is not lifted, will it hinder progress? Uh, you know, that's a good question, Katie. I, I don't think it will necessarily hinder progress, mainly because there are several different sources of these stem cell lines. Uh, the federally funded stem cell lines, as you've talked about, also, the private sector has been funding stem cell lines for some time, so they're going to be added to the mix. But I think most importantly, to your point, uh, a lot of fertility clinics have embryos that would otherwise be discarded that might be sources of stem cell lines as well. So if you add those all up, I think you're going to have uh, plenty, of, plenty of embryos for potential stem cell lines. And as we heard, the only FDA-approved clinical trial for using stem cells involves spinal cord injuries. What other conditions or diseases right. show the most potential to respond to this kind of therapy? You know, when I think, when you think about these sorts of diseases, you have to think about this idea that these, lo these stem cells are going to go in there and fix a discrete problem. So problems like diabetes, for example, where the pancreas is not making enough insulin. Problems like Parkinson's disease, where you're simply not making enough dopamine in the brain. Those are the types of diseases, those discrete diseases that are probably going to be the most responsive. To, uh, and the same thing with spinal cord injury. Uh, my guess is a lot of people talk about Alzheimer's disease, but because it is so global in the brain, it might be less responsive. We'll know more on that in the years to come, certainly, Katie. All right. Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Sanjay, thank you. Thank you.